Hi, everybody. So, as a drag queen, I have three very important interests. One is science, one is lip syncing to music, and the third is drama. <laughs> so, I am going to combine all three of those today for the talk. So, there has been an increase in the amount of antibiotic resistance within uh, the world, and that's a, a lot of the reason is because. Uh, the misuse of antibiotics, okay? But Big Pharma is not helping with that because there have been decreased discovery of new antibiotics uh, because the pharmaceutical industry usually gets a low financial return on them compared to daily medications like heart disease or diabetes. And so that leaves us with an antibiotic crisis that usually needs to be solved by colleges and, un and universities, aka. So I wanted to ask the audience, where do most of the antibiotics come from if we're trying to discover new ones? Do they come from animals? Are they produced by microbes? Are they created in a lab? Or are they produced by plants? Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we'll just skip that then, since I already gave the answer away. They're produced by microorganisms. About 70% of, uh, of the antibiotics that we use in the clinic and in the lab are actually produced by microorganisms, and the other 30% are from the lab um, or produced by plants. So some of you may be thinking, hold on a girl, why would antibiotics be produced by bacteria if antibiotics kill bacteria? And there's actually this important hypothesis in the field about chemical warfare, right? Like So, if there are a lot of bacteria living within an environment, uh, as shown on the slide, there are multiple different species of bacteria, and they need to compete for resources like food and space. So, bacteria, you may not know, can actually talk to one another, but they use a chemical language in order to do that. And so, if the blue and red bacteria get into an argument, the blue one might produce an antibiotic, that then kills everybody around it, including the bystander bacteria in yellow. And so today I'm going to tell you about one of these arguments that I have been studying in the lab. And I need to introduce my cast of queens, okay, to help me out with this. One is called Cauchyplanes ceruleus, and the other, Actinoplanes duramensis. Uh, but I'm going to rename them Carol and Ashley because you don't actually hear what they're t called. And then there are bystander queens who are going to uh, still die from this interaction. Yeah, yeah. So we can grow these bacteria on plates by themselves. Okay, so this would be Carol and Ashley by themselves. And then I'm going to force them to argue with, another, with, with each other again because I love drama. And so, when they get into an argument, Carol's going to produce an antibiotic, and that's called a zone of death, when there are no bystander bacteria able to survive around Carol. What this looks like in the lab is basically as I uh, animated it. So we have Carol and Ashley growing by themselves, recognize how there are no zones of death, meaning they're not making antibiotics by themselves. But Carol is going to make a zone of death um, when she argues with Ashley. So I told you that there was a chemical, they, they communicate chemically, right? And I figure most of you don't actually know chemical languages. And so I translated their chemical argument into English. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's, let's see how this goes. Like, I'm not going to come down the runway looking like you. Like, you do you, I'm going to be me. What is me and what is you? What is you? Girl, look at you, grab a mirror. You can come down the runway and look like you've stepped off a Rodeo Drive like a goddamn supermodel. I will never look like that. True. You'll never be glam. Boo, just because you got a sugar daddy who pays for everything for you. Oh. I don't have a sugar daddy, sweetheart. Everything that I've had, I've worked for. And I worked for to get, and I've built myself. So I need you to know that 100%. I don't have a sugar daddy. I've never had a sugar daddy. If I wanted a sugar daddy, yes, I probably could go out and get one because I am what? Sickening. You could never have a sugar daddy because you are not that kind of girl. Baby, everything I've had, I've worked for, and I've gotten myself. I built myself from the ground up. <laughs> so. 
So what happened? Right? Something that I forgot to tell you is that usually in these arguments, there's some kind of trigger that escalates the situation. So what was the trigger in this argument? Sugar daddy, exactly, right? So sugar daddy was the trigger. And then Carol took her antibiotic cocktail and <laughs> threw it at Ashley. And then the splashback hit some of the other queens, right? Those are the bystanders. But the question is, if I'm trying to identify a new antibiotic, I need to know what the antibiotic is. So I need to take everything, all the ingredients in this antibiotic cocktail and separate them out so that I can isolate the one molecule that's responsible for killing. So the way that we do that in the lab is called a chemical extraction. Okay? And so I've represented all the ingredients by different colored smiley faces. And as a drag queen, I love shopping, right? So I want to separate the molecules based on how much they want to go to the mall. Either really like going to the mall, indifferent, or don't like it at all. In the lab, we usually do this uh, broad separation based on polarity. So we have nonpolar molecules, something like oil, going down to polar molecules, something like water. Remember, oil and water don't mix. So we can separate molecules using those kinds of methods. So it turns out that the antibiotic, which is the purple one with the red face, uh, really likes going to the mall. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. So I'm going to take these molecules to the mall with me. Now, when you go to the mall, there are plenty of stores, and each molecule is going to have a different preference for a different store. So they're going to go through the, the mall at different paces, and in the lab, we use something called liquid chromatography to precisely separate these molecules out. And so the, the liquid chromatography column is like a mall on Black Friday. It's very packed, and so molecules are going to move very slowly through it. So what I had previously shown is that the molecules went through the column at different rates, and when they come out the other end, we can separate them and collect each separate ingredient. What then we can do is, since we have the ingredients separated, we can test them and say that this is, in fact, our antibiotic because it's the only one that kills bacteria. So I can get my PhD, right? That's it. <sighs> Unfortunately, not. What we need to do is identify what this antibiotic actually is. And in, uh, in the lab, that means we need to know the structure of the molecule. The structure of the antibiotic we determine in two different ways, either through mass spectrometry or NMR. Mass spectrometry tells us how large the molecule is, generally speaking. And NMR will tell us how each of the elements from the periodic table are connected together. And so I actually brought a crown to show you as a demonstration, because what's a drag queen without a crown, right? And so this is my, my beautiful tiara that I made out of Legos. And so in mass spec, we're asking how big it is, right? So mass spec only sees, only sees a silhouette of the molecule, OK? So it will tell us generally how large it is. And by that, I mean what the mass of the molecule is. Um, but we don't actually know what it's made up of or anything about its structure. But the beauty of mass spec is that, in a very controlled way, it can break molecules apart. And so then we can measure how large each of its pieces are, which, again, is getting us closer to the structure of this molecule, but it's not the full picture. That's where NMR comes in. NMR can see in color. And so it will tell us, since each color represents a unique element from the periodic table, we, it, NMR will tell us how each uh, color is connected to which other color and how often that happens. So how many times is yellow connected to yellow? How often is white connected to red, et cetera, et cetera? So those three pieces of information combined together can help us get a really clear picture of what this antibiotic is. So are you ready for the answer? Yeah. OK, can I get a drum roll? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm still in the process of banging my head against the wall with these experiments. So I don't have an answer for you today. 
But hopefully, what you've gathered is that microbes can naturally produce a lot of the antibiotics that we use in the lab and in the clinic. Um, that bacteria can talk to one another and get into arguments, which can then turn on new antibiotics that we can discover. And I told you about the chemical techniques we can use to identify those antibiotics. Now, remember back from my first slide, I said antibiotic resistance uh, is on the rise, and that's mostly because of misuse of antibiotics. So I want you to each play your part in decreasing antibiotic resistance by properly using your antibiotics. Thank you. And it wouldn't be a drag show without a shameless plug to support your local drag queens and follow me on Instagram. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dinah Caucus Roach. Yeah, don't, don't forget any belongings. Thank you.